waiting for the teacher, opening the book, giving the examination, waiting for the results, getting reward or, or complaint. Some teachers we loved, some teachers we hated, some of our friends were criminals, some of them were nice. We experienced the school in a different manner than in regression models. So we have a communication problem here, which is a serious one. Okay, some relevant recent history for Finnish education in order to understand both our studies and PISA studies and special education. About 50 years ago, I don't know how many years it is, new basic education was instituted. Two new professions were created, part-time special education, meaning a teacher who is specially trained but has no own class, can freely use his resources to support. And we talk about the extension of that way of working. And then study counselors, because the new system were for everybody and the school path or trajectories or whatever they are called needs support for young people to make correct selections. <laughs> it's a loud, uh, well, they replaced career psychologist or vocational psychologist, which occupational psychologist, which we understand. Okay, an extension, because the new system for everybody, step by step, it also, everybody was concerned. What kind of, what were the aims for this system? What kind of goals we have? I'm using here David Olson. I may have used that in Yaroslav, but it doesn't matter. I am using this because I believe in these words. This is the fundamental idea behind Finnish education. It is not only Finnish, I believe it's also Russian education and all other systems want our pupils, partly our children and grandchildren, to be able to take command of the society when we are dying. We want them to, to do better than we did. That means that they have to control themselves, not by others. But how to measure this? It's easy to say, it's nice you can read like Makarenko or someone else, long books about that. But books are books and life is life. We need books and ideas like this, but it's very difficult to prove them. So educational system is in a one sense silent to research as the whole system of, of activities. We have to break it down. Sometimes we lose something relevant, some we hope to be able to Humpty Dumpty went down and it was a problem to collect the egg again. So we have to break down the education system in the hope that at the end it will emerge like the phoenix. How to get there? This is a nice picture from Madrid Museum. Because this is the life they face. That was also Goya's, Goya's pictures. Let the school lead us to correct solutions in an unpredictable life. Why that beautiful child and the fighting man and the unpredictable? We made a study called Individualized Service Systems 
which is one way to describe with three words Finnish special education. It's an individualized serving system. And here we wrote that because of the unpredictability of the future, we are facing a fundamental problem for all our educational institutions. How to prepare them for a future which is getting more and more unpredictable. More and more does not mean that it is totally, it's mostly predictable. But there are elements which can be seen as unemployment for young people, the length of work situations or careers. You have a life as short-term uh, working employment. You have to change to find, to sell yourself. And now we have another goal, active and honorable membership. But that leads simultaneously to the need of take care of everybody. If we do not, then the expenses for the society, and not to say anything about human persons, will be very high. Then we have to pay for those who are, not, who are unemployed. Someone must guarantee that they, they, ha they, they live their lives. If they are not earning, then we must pay for them. I don't like that at all. I don't think that you like it either. That every penny you earn, some, someone takes away because he's saying that he doesn't mind. I can do whatever I like. No need for me to earn my life earning. So that leads to a situation where we cannot anymore say that it's up to you to learn. If you are stupid, then you don't learn. I have done my best, which was told in my teacher seminar. Teachers must be able to change themselves. Also, if we use that metaphor of landscape and map, if the landscape is changing, please change the map. I believe that the compass is still the same. But, but anyway, maps are to be tailored to something else. And this is the basic pro problem for my empirical work and our work in special education. How to handle this kind of situation? We have now reformed radically. Oh, no, radical is too strong. We have made some changes in the fundamental act of education dealing with how to organize special education. And in order to describe, I need some background. Here is something. This is done so that a friend of mine, professor in special education in Uvascula, made her master's thesis 60 years ago. 60? 60 years ago. Or 2060. I mean, 60, 70, 80, 90, 10. Yes, I mean, it's 60 years. I, I was studying then also. I was already alive, at least. But anyway, he measured one uvascular city with cognitive scales of reading comprehension. Everybody. About 300. That is now placed on the percentile level. You, you kind of have norm, norm the present performance, the late performance for zero level. That means that they were definitely better if you are 90 percentile. So the real difference is there, but we normalize it to be as a comparative level. Then the same scales were given to the say, in same schools, same time using the same regulations, and the new norms are there. What do you see? That's the mean level 
a very high. It's standardized 1.5 standard units. It's a huge increase in competence. So you see here a huge increase in reading and writing comprehension after four, 50 years of basic education. But you see also a profile. The lowest performing children are now increased much more than the mean level. And also <coughs> the better performing children have increased their competence level, but less than the mean level and definitely less than the lowest performing children. We believe that this is the evidence that educating everybody together using the law and principle everybody can be educated and has the right to be educated, the Finnish reform produced a huge increase in, in reading and other competences. But not unfavoring more gifted or talented or better performing children, they are here, they also gained, but much, much more those 21st, 25 lowest performing children who have now really increased their level. Actually, of course, the better ones are still better ones. This, this is a, a double normative scale. Okay, then we can show next slide where PISA results are presented in the same manner. Here we are, actually, uh, these, are ten, these are quartiles, but I could not manipulate Excel, so it doesn't matter. Best ones are here. <coughs> Finnish and other Scandinavian countries. Our difference from the mean level of Scandinavian countries is high, but our lowest performing children are much, much, much more higher than other Scandinavian countries. So we have get the same profile. This profile is an international proof of the same fact that we got from Finnish national studies. Our lowest performing children are <coughs> definitely best in the world. Even if the mean level might not be any more the best one. So we have the best performing 25 lowest performing children in the world. No one can has proved that their children have learned better than our children. Now our mean level is going down. Slightly, but, but anyway. So, we believe that that is due to the special education arrangements and other forms of which I will tell you something about. Okay. And something else happened. Here we have ages, numbers, percentages, and the first line here, so children which might be called nowadays children with special needs. There are reasons why they are too, it's almost 7% of our children are placed in classrooms and schools which might be called special schools and special classes. There are some details which are important but I will skip them. And the number of those children who receive so-called part-time special education is that you, you are studying in your own classroom, then you are pulled out for one lesson, two lessons, three lessons in a week in a small group where you analyze mathematical problems or reading problems or behavioral issues. They are pulled out. We call that part-time the special education. Now, if you calculate these together, so you get almost 30%. Therefore, it is not any more special education in the sense of defectology <laughs> or deaf and blind and hard of hearing, which constitute about maximum 2%. So we are using this concept of special education in a much, much more liberal way 
and we are talking about support system using a full-time class support or part-time support. Actually, that can be done by having 15% of students as special teachers. The number of special teachers in Finnish comprehensive school, we have about 50,000 teachers there. You have to multiply all Russian by 100, by 15, but anyway. So we have 50% of our teachers in basic education are special teachers. 15, one, five. <coughs> That's a huge number, actually. But they can treat 30%. They can handle because the arrangement and logistics is organized so that they are not only teaching their own class, they are teaching those who need. Therefore, the resources, actually, of course, they are very big. 15% means a lot of money. But the outcome is also. So, numbers increased, which created economic and other problems, and therefore a reform was started. Why to change? We have published part of our results in this paper, Journal of Educational Change, which you can then... Uh, the new principles are here. These are the tools that is the core. If the child asks, if the parents are concerned or teachers notice, we can start instantly some easy support systems. It takes only a meet, uh, lunch, <laughs> lunch break for teachers. Someone complains that Yarko is behaving badly, and someone might simply... It does not need any form of decision, like in the States, the no child left behind requires a lot of papers, and it takes half a year to make a decision. We can do that instantly. If the rules are made clear with the principal and among teachers, which is not an easy task. So, okay, we introduce a new system. That was started before the law changed. It was done so that municipalities, we have 340 municipalities or regions in your terms. Or perhaps municipalities is still. They asked for money from the ministry before not to 2008. And they were selected then to be particip participating municipalities. But now we have a, an interesting issue here. How many schools in Russia or regions in Russia you have to handle or, or work with in order to have a permanent effect? I call it influence epidemic effect. What is the minimum percentage of... No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. We, I believe that 5% is not enough. No. Mm -hmm. not 55 is too much. It depends on the differences I made. So for Finland it... No, 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 this is not... No, 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 you're making a mistake. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's not a question of the size, it's a question of percentage of... Well, how does an epidemic effect spreads? It's not a question of the size. Influenza goes through Russia as well as Finland. Actually, it's not a question of the size. It takes more time, it, I agree, but, but it's not a question of percentage leave the size away. No, no, you, you are still keeping with the idea that the size matters. If we are talking about percentages, the size does not matter. I don't, nobody believes this, but so it is. Remember how percentage is defined. Okay, <laughs> we organized, we launched a big thing 
My research unit was pre re responsible for developmental evaluation. Uvascular University was in responsible for training of the municipalities. And 235 municipalities, and then 30 new abide. So actually, this is the timeline, new curricula, our starting, and here I calculated the percentages of municipalities taking part in our project. So we had a coverage of almost 75% of all Finnish municipalities. That would mean in Russia 50,000 schools. Well, how many schools do you have? You have about 100,000 schools. You have 50,000 schools. 69. 69. Okay, you would need now 40,000 schools to participate in the same scale of project. But anyway, that led to a situation where we could handle a lot of data. Here we introduce again theoretical concepts, response to intervention model, vocabulary. This is the way to describe. Our modern system is called general support, meaning extra lessons and other things, differentiation, modified textbooks, all the tools available in the law and available in the market. You can use whatever. Intensified support may be for 20% and special support for, for, uh, for 5%. And more. Basically, we, we have tried to something more and something different, general support. If that is not enough, then more intensive and slightly different. If not enough, then very intensive and very different. The problem is quite often that someone is lagging behind and teacher is giving his support or extra lessons, doing exactly in the same manner as he did. <laughs> Not so early effective factor is the group size. But you could try with small groups other things. Big groups require some rules. Small groups might easily work with other rules. So most often teachers don't change their teaching practices, even the class size goes down. Very bad and surprising, but still understandable. So this is the way we try to describe our present system. Something not enough, more not enough, very much more. So we have analyzed. Here is one type of research which we have been doing. That's a documentary analysis of papers which have been produced during the, this kind of process. This is not an experimental work, this is a content analysis of different kinds of papers. So there, this was the data, three time points measurement of documents. In order to analyze whether we can see from the official document written by the schools about the new reform and the intentions of a municipality to participate in the new preface. So they wrote it. There were some lines. They, we needed some information, so the documents were similar in certain sense, but the content varied. They used their own vocabulary. How to reflect the ongoing process of educational reform was our research question. The total documentary package contained one million words. 
it's actually that high. Well, I don't know how to put it. Yes, more than my hay. A lot of paper. We have two researchers who went through every, everything. We had actually the role to write a report to all the municipalities based on their papers. We used an electric platform to comment all the papers. That was the major task. So we ac actively participated in the writing process of the municipalities and schools when they were preparing their plans for the new legislation and new reform. So it was active. We call that developmental evaluation. Not only passively recording in the books, but actively reporting back and giving concrete examples of good things and things which we thought were not according to the new ideas. So it was... We all are writing papers for international journals and get nasty reviews. We wrote pleasant and nasty reviews together. But it was not as fundamental as for, for a paper to be reacted. We simply said that you should do better, and you could do better. Nobody get hurt. Nobody were killed. And nobody... So far. No, 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 it's already too late to die for that. <laughs> okay, we actually constituted two variables, special terms and strategy terms, old, new. And then we could construct this picture. What, does, what do we he see here? We see the 80% coverage of Finnish schools, written documents reveal in time, red ones go down, the special terms used in previous systems or, or still in power, and new terms appearing. What do we see here otherwise? We see the effects of an in intervention project. There were training for schools and in, in, in the regions and schools. There were a lot of discussions electronic platform, we constituted an electric platform where all the documents of the schools were available for other schools as well. So it was an electric platform for discussion and keeping all the documents created during this process. Okay. And here we see first learning effect, over-learning effect the green line, then it starts going down because the reality does not change so fast. And the old terms were not bad ones, but they were still reflecting the old, old story. And then we could classify using, I'm using this Hull and Locke theory or model, that's very old, but old things are useful when the new ones are not better. <laughs> so, they, they describe in the school context what are the marks of stages of accepting an innovation. There are certain mark markers which we could follow. So we could use the levels are orientation, preparation, non-routine integration and renewal. And so we classified them not in small but in three big levels, refinement, mechanical use, non-use. So we could classify all the papers and participating partners. Mostly, we observe no change, mechanical use, no evidence that, of evidence, <laughs> simply words. But they, they were in given direction, they were, well, they were keep the king what he kings wants type of things. But they are needed as well. In order to change, you have to change your words. 
I don't know any other way. And then 18% were really. Okay. This leads to one, in our understanding, important conclusion. For any big reforms, you need to take care of the vocabulary and semantics so that they're talking about, at least superficially, about the same things. But but we are using Luhmann's systemic discursive perspective here. It's a systemic theory, very too complicated to my mind, but anyway. External administration cannot guarantee the going through anything. People pay lip service, but guiding government and leading project leaders can help to discuss about what's going on in a manner which then opens up windows for the participating persons to start to look and see by themselves. And then bottom-up influences can appear and can be evaluated on the municipal level and to be coordinated with better understanding of the new concepts and something new seems to be can be popped up can be pop up pop it up <laughs> but no direct way okay and the numbers. We also ask whether we did have a lot of e electronic questionnaires. So we sent also all over to the coordinators of the municipal coordinators. What did they think of changes, improvement in the overall situation and conditions for pupils who need support, whether the new project was was moving to the right direction, yes, the answer. A lot of these questions, but they, were, they are not important. Official statistics shows that, yes, they go down, but surprisingly, yes, the special support, which is the most expensive thing, that was the aim to get down and to increase the intensified support, and that happened. That trend has continued, so we believe that we can now say that you can handle a big reform project following some other ways. We are analyzing, <coughs> reanalyzing all the data using Fulan and Hargreaves theories, but those papers are yet on the Coming, and here is some movements to. What happens here? This is another data from Kirjavaden and Marku Jahnukan, special education students in transition to further education or four year register based follow up study in Finland in learning and individual differences. What is the outcome variable here? That's a directory using your concepts. <laughs> Whether they go to graduate, whether they went to lyceums, general upper secondary education, the, I don't know what color is, brown, and then vocational diploma. You see actually that the percentage is not 100. That's a dropout. So, no dropout in basic education, for secondary education, dropout rate is during a four-year period, 30%. 100 minus 70 is 30. Most of them appear again. So the net dropout might be about seven, maybe 10% in Finland. It was not so big, it's now increasing. But when you see what happens to children who are this intensif intensified research curricula or well, 
special support or modified, that's the most severely handicapped. Deaf and blind and mentally handicapped. So they mainly go to vocational schools. And here you see that, yes, even if we have a good system, it does not guarantee that they would go to the zones, and I don't need any need for that. All Western, all Northern countries in the world are facing the problem that we have too many university graduates. No jobs for them anymore in the same manner as it used to be. A sad story for a university person like me and you, but so it is. So we can see very generally the structure and yet this is not a proof of any effects of the new system, actually. But this is a leading link to my next stages. And my, my special education almost coming to an end, then I will do some learning to learn studies still. This is one way to generalize. We have been using Lauren Resnick's paper, Nested Learning System for the Thinking Curriculum, because Lauren Resnick is from Pittsburgh, very clever lady dealing with advancement of thinking. And now she has moved to analyze reforms and what kind of constraints she has found before you can get, get real lasting effects. And here is the basic outcome. No real lasting effects can be gained without involving all the relevant actors to play together for process feedback and for learning together. And here is his lab description of the situation. I will not go, that is not very new distinction. We all do that kind of classroom, school and district, so, so it's not. But anyway, constraints and enablers are there. And the more general uh, generalization is, can be used is triangle. Human capital from the perspective of teachers. Social capital. And tools and routines. So, beliefs of teachers are important, professional communities relevant, and it is important to say something about to the question of so what, how to do. Intervention is generally the answer, but anyway, that is that. And now, I will partly change my topic. Let's call the mental frame now as a basic concept. And remember my Heckman path formula. Okay, I still need that. Why Finnish students and some other Chinese students are doing so well in PISA? It's, it has been very difficult to show. We have given our historical reasons. You have given your own reasons for your middle-range outcomes. And other countries have tried to give their relevant self-explanations. There are very many different kinds of explanations. But I prefer also to have empirical inputs, and that's very difficult. But we suddenly realized, not only we, but here I'm using myself, that in the PISA data, there is information that the booklet has been given to you, but you have left no answer. It's simply you left the item untouched. 
So we calculated the percentage of that. So no left, whether the number of items which had no scribble or any mark which could be coded. So the more you leave items away, the higher NIL score you got. No item left score. The bigger means worst. Small means good. <laughs> and what happens when we calculate, here is the nil score, and level means mean PISA score. That's 2009 now. There, never mind how I calculated the level, it contains science reading and math. Here you see the empirical curve. Almost 75% of variance is explained. This is the better single explanation of any PISA results I have ever seen. So the more you missed, the, the better you score, right? Is yeah, the, lo the lower you score. Nil, nil okay. means that you left 20% of items unanswered. Okay, okay. And here are the countries. <laughs> Kyrgyzstan, Peru, Albania, Argentina, Azerbaijan, Panama, Qatar, Tunisia, Montenegro, Trinidad, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Korea, Finland, Singapore, New Zealand. Russia is there. Middle yeah, race, next, next. PISA outcome, and almost 10% of items left unanswered. What do we see here? I call it dutifulness. Something commitment to the school tasks. Okay, now I continue with my learning to learn studies to model that commitment, investing or pure. Actually, this is a, a kind of measure of investing your giving, investing yourself in PISA task. Low stake testing situation. Investing yourself. Because actually I'm using, Gattel used in his intelligence theory the concept of investment for the first time. Raymond Gattel. And now, jan Eric Gustafsson from Göteborg reintroduced, and I realized that investment is a very useful concept. You invest yourself. Because it's not only cognition. Okay, and here are the, my, the fundamental way I analyze our other things. School marks, PISA, other things, they predict something which we call lifelong learning transfer or reflective theoretical learning or constitution of knowledge at work. And also beliefs and conceptions or attitudes are being formed. The problem is that how to call these? It's kind of screened away. School, school is far away. They, are, they were originally called cross-curricular competencies. Then they were named key competencies. Then they were named 21st century skills. The same kind of ideas which 15, 20 years ago were called cross-curricular outcomes are now called 21st century skills. You can, you can track down the, the references when they are coming. It's an interesting social story. <laughs> but the problem is what kind of psychological interpretation you give here. Isaac mentioned our paper, general and specific cognitive skills. This is exactly the problem here. <laughs> what kind of theories we want to introduce, and that then opens up windows for the answers to the question, so what? If we have a bad theory here, no, it, we cannot take, say anything. But okay, this is my general landscape of my own research. Here are our learning to learn studies. We do have cohort studies, we have longitudinal studies, we have cross-sectional sequences. Cross-sectional sequences mean that we have two parallel 
longitudinal so that we can control six we can control all the age related movements i don't know any other research group nowadays since paltes who have been using cross sectional sequences because they need a lot of handling it's a complex problem so we have cross sectional we have longitudinal we have cross sectional sequences Here is an example of, of our task. I'm using Piaget, a lot of control variables. It's one, one task. One of my tasks is this 21st century game. Definitely this. That's the core of all the critical thinking ideas of Diana Kuhn and others. They complain that pendulum task is too simple to describe present day problem solving situations. But definitely, scientific reasoning is core within. And here is my other task. We have a formula 3G5 is the same as 10P5. What is G and what is P? You can easily calculate it, but it requires recursive thinking. And here is some evidence that our boys and girls are doing less well I will not go into that, but these are examples of ta tasks. Can this be called learning to learn? Definitely. <laughs> the arithmetical operations are very simple. This is a surprising context for old, overlearned, automatized skills. Therefore, I call it, there is a surprise, therefore they are learning to learn. You adapt what you have learned. Adaptation is the core of learning to learn. PSA would call it assimilation and accommodation. Some others call it different names, but I believe that it's exactly this process which we are now dealing with. Davidov called this generalization. Vygotsky called this true concepts. Galperi might call it third type of orientation. It's, it's, it's those Relations are not very clear. They might be said to be clear, but they are not. But anyway, Vygotsky's true concept and, and Davidov's generalization are definitely around the same room, at least. And here we actually model now the paper which Isaac was referring. We are using modeling Multi-level modeling, this is a multi-level, this is on, because we could now first prove that formal thinking constitutes the basic element of all our cognitive scales. We have here a certain number of them, because that leads to interesting follow. And here we have multi-level modeling of the same thing. It doesn't really... This is only to impress you. Here we do have a list of our attitudes and beliefs. I, I class, this is a, all those coordinates are correlations. Take an example of that one, or here the highest one, agency ability. It's a self-efficacy, Skinner and Bandura. So we have agency ability, it correlates with our learning to learn scales with four point plus five, and it correlates with school marks point five. So this is a vector of two correlations of all our attitudes. This is very complex. It, it, it contains a lot of information, but basically you can see a, a line. And they can be classified positive correlations, near zero correlations, and negative correlations. They have different effects on children's learning, positive and negative ones. If we want to look for new kind of soft skills, we must search them near zero correlated things, because we know already this. 
that's another thing. Here is basically a form which we are using in our modeling. We do this is take from Heckman's, but it doesn't make it the same. We predict the outcome of a task at H using cognition. Other things, other acquired skills, and effort devoted to task. But that is a problem because here we have a recursive function. Because that's formula one. This is simple regression f formula for vectors. So don't be confused by that. It's a simple regression model. Perhaps not so simple, but anyway. Here we have a component. But surprisingly, Heckman presents, and I agree, that that component is again using the cognitive abilities and also incentives to perform and preferences. <laughs> the investment is based not only on cognitive skills and other, but it's a double related to, to your internal representations. I don't know better names than social and emotional skills. Exactly. Yeah. And they are appearing, they are double. Therefore, they are so difficult to measure. Yeah. And, and then they, there is a time factor, which I know. And here are some results from our longitudinal studies. This is the general developmental course in school for competencies. They increase slowly, attitudes decrease because self-reflection increases. They are using life at scale in a different way. And there happens a structuration, I call it competencies and attitudes. And it seems that the school marks and examination records are the effective factor. Which leads to a sad situation. If you are not good, then you are bound to lose this game. Here are the growth of thinking. They are all, of course, in the same scale. So you see the slow movement from sixth to sixth, third, sixth, and ninth grade. Actually, it's asymptotic already. <laughs> the cognitive curve is not linear, it's asymptotic. At the age of 15, it gets all already asymptotic, and 30% of young people are on formal level. Piaget was definitely. Not correct, but the reasons were his samples from Switzerland, Geneva. If you take the most selective schools from Geneva, you can get 100% of formal thinkers. But if you have a normative sample, never. It, it's not possible. I don't, I, it's never in the world. Changes in attitudes, they go down. <laughs> now I'm using a comp a complex of all these attitudes, but it happens. Now, if you are quantitatively oriented, you already know what happens when I put them together. The, the correlation between learning ability of cognition and attitudes and GPR increases. Because that's sixth, sixth grade, ninth grade, light, slightly going down. That's the explanatory variable. These come from that up to that. And that link also increases. That happens because cognitive increases increase slowly and negative goes down. The relations get better, correlations get higher. <laughs> but we believe that effective factor is school marks. It creates children to think as school wants them to think. <laughs> school organizes children in a line, and you get higher marks, and you get lower marks, and please think accordingly. And the children learn to think. So, therefore, this is a structuration. That is the effect of going to school. That's my firm belief that here we can give some evidence that school has both positive and negative effects. It orders children in line. Cognition doesn't 
cognition order does not change so much, but serious attitudes are organized so that when you calculate the correlation between two vectors, vectors they get higher. Children learn to think in the manner which schools supports. And here, well, I, I passed that. Okay. Remember our PISA results and no item left. Remember the early blue building investing. Can we measure whether how the investment takes place? Yes, I believe we can. We have moved to almost totally computer-based assessments leading to a situation when we can download logit data. We can calculate from computers the working time, total time on task, time on task, working time. Please remember, working time is not the same as reaction time. Reaction times rather gifted uh, more intelligent children, their re reaction times is low. It's a negative correlation, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. Working time is not reaction time. You may think the relation so that far, uh, better equipped children are faster in calculations. They do in the same time more calculations if you want that relation. Okay, so working time can be used as an estimate of commitment or investing yourself. Let's put it more simple. I've taken pictures from my colleague and friends Marie Paulina's dissertation, which was given to Isaac just a moment ago. This is a simple model. Nothing surprising here so far. We have first grade, third grade, and sixth grade, third grade students. We ask from teachers reading skills when coming to school, and then we do have a lot of first grade tests, analytical reasoning, visual pattern memory, and following instructions. Following instruction is my modification of El Conin's dictation task. So, nothing surprising. Simply. All that the figures are lines go to Rome and, and not, not, nothing, nothing very exciting. But then we add gender. Mother's education and the knowledge whether the child belongs to a group, either no support, intensified support, or special support. Now we introduce again the special education and others. To put it shortly, some lines disappear when gender is included. Some lines get smaller than mother's education is included. Children in special needs are mostly children from less educated families. There is more boys than girls. Please, this is Helsinki and Bamba. We, we have here, here is a multi-group, multi-level structural equation where Helsinki and Vanta data and other are simultaneously calculated. But the point is here, all the lines disappear except that one, leading to a conclusion that if children receive special education, 
during first or second or third grade, their difference from other group in reasoning skills diminishes. That means that children belonging to a target group are more good here than the model would predict. So actually, this is a proof that our first and second grade support system seems not to mean much for mathematical thinking or reading comprehension, but reasoning skills seem not to lag behind as much as they were earlier. All other surprising things might be here, but that was the point. And I'm coming to the end of my points. Here we have two models. On the left side, we have school marks on, on third grade. An analytical reasoning from first grade, or well, maybe they are all from third grade, but it doesn't matter. The problem is here, visible, and I will try to explain that. If we take that model, there is a cognitive factor, positive <coughs> attitudes and negative attitudes. What do you see? Yes, the previous cognitive level predicts our test results two, three years later. Nice, nice as expected. Negative attitudes contribute negatively. If you have high level of self-handicapping, you get lower scores. If you have good attitudes in self-efficacy, self you get higher scores. But point. Significant negative, significant positive. That's the basic model in most educational psychology papers. But if school marks is placed here, a surprising thing happens. Negative attitudes go down, but they are still negative. Mastering attitudes go down, and they turn negative. What does this mean? It means that when school marks is used as an index of developmental level, actually it takes into account all the positive attitudes. They are discounted already in the school marks. That, in technical terms, is called suppression effect. So it seems that positive attitudes are in the restrictive world where school marks and cognitive outcome is measured are suppressors. Suppressor means that you have a line, it may be 40 here, it, 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 it can be something, let's forget this, you add positive attitudes, that goes up. Mediators behave otherwise. That goes down if you have that model. So it seems that positive attitudes in a school context are suppressors. They are taken into account in the school marks already, and you cannot interpret. There might be some over-optimization in your answering. You tend, if you are feeling good, you tend to put, put too high marks. They do not anymore contribute to the test performance, because they are already taken into account in the school marks. But negative attitudes are much more dangerous. They, they diminish the relations because they, are, they lead to different kind of investment, and you are using your investment more lousily, which can be proved in the next picture. Here we included total working time, time on task. And what do you see? 
Also in cognitive scales, detrimental attitudes mean that you are using less time <laughs> and using less time leads to worse outcome. But you are using the time also very badly. You have an extra negative effect because of your attitudes even after taking account of your investments. And the similar thing happens here. Thought is explained by school marks and positive attitude. That goes almost zero. That remains negative. That remains negative. So here we have a proof that investment really takes place. Attitudes play a role. And we have a problem of Closing time. You're almost out of time. Yes, yes. I will end exactly in two seconds. Let's start with that. What to do? This is Kulan Karubis. The other one takes the whole ship. The other one takes one man. But of course, there is always the glory of glory of business world. And that's the way to heaven. I took that yesterday evening from Gum. There is a golden way to somewhere. We don't know where. But there we are going. And that's the place where there are no losers, everybody wins, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thank that you very was much. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, we are almost uh, out of time, but uh, maybe we, you know, people who need to go should go. But uh, I suggest we take at least maybe 10, 15 minutes for questions and answers and discussion. Anybody? Well, okay. Thank you. I have a question regarding voice. Uh, um, in our longitudinal data, we also see, and as in uh, different countries, that we have a problem with boys. I mean that after the eighth grade, there is a lower part of uh, boys who continue to uh, ac in academic track than girls because uh, this is due to their lower performance. We, yes. If we take um, boys and girls with the same level of performance, the, uh, they continue in the same way, way yes. And um, uh, does uh, this support system in Finland uh, diminishes this problem? No. The problem is more relevant in big cities where if we take the academic track as a point of view, there might be in some small city only one Lyceum. And they take everybody who wants to go there. But if you have a selection, like you have in many bigger cities, there are several things. The selection is paid on school marks, leading to that the most popular ones simply get a strong girl majority because of the selection procedure based on school marks. And it's legal in Finland to use any other. It's, it's, it's not legal. You cannot favor boys, not, not even from any, not, it doesn't matter where they are coming, what the family background. You cannot take them in if the school mark is not high enough. So it's actually controlled by the school marks. And we can guarantee that the lowest school marks are not so low as they could be, but that's, that will not solve the selection problem or trajectory. Because nobody knows, except in English, all, in all other subjects, girls are better in Finland. In math, in science, in languages, even in sport, 
music, except English. And there is no difference because of the video games. So that's the effect of informal learning. So we cannot do it. It's this boy, gender gap, it is known as the name with gender gap. That is everywhere now. That's in northern Lapland, and I believe if you have data from northern Russia, it's even much stronger. No boys go continue, and only girls go down to university and then return back and get married. It's a universal problem everywhere in the Nordic globe. The, no the more north you go, the worse boys do. But so if you travel north, the women became, become smarter and smarter with each latitude. Well, that's, but, but anyway, if you go fishing there, who would you select to accompany you? An academy, academically trained man or woman or the local boy? Of course. I, I, I choose women every day over a <laughs> man. <laughs> but anyway, this gender gap can, is almost, it's very difficult to solve. Yes, please. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have two questions related to your first part of the presentation. Uh, you mentioned some like electronic system for the teachers supporting or maybe principal support. Can you tell a little bit more about this? I mean, how it looks? It is like a social network when, when they can communicate, uh, share the experience, or it's like some archive or cloud where they can find some information. And uh, the second question is also related to this topic. It's about the stages of innovations you show, like how they accept uh, innovations. That was quite interesting for me. Uh, but can you tell how did you analyze it? How did you understand it? It was from the uh, document analyzing you show, or it was some questionnaires or something like this? First part, last part first, yes, based on documentary papers. We classified them. The hull and locks give a matrix where examples are given for these acceptance levels. Mm -hmm. It has been also used in England, in King's College London, where they have trained in-service teachers to master cognitive acceleration programs. It's published in a book by Philip Aidy, teachers in service, I don't remember the name, but I have it somewhere. So the answer is based on that. The second one, there are different platforms for teachers. Now I was talking about a very restricted one related to this project. It was organized in the platform of University of Uvascula. It's, it might be still open. So it was organized so that all the documents of the participating municipalities and schools could be downloaded, then our comments included, and then all the documents were opened for all the schools. And they could go there and comment, or they could add their own documentary. It's, it was a restricted platform for the period of the project, but there are other platforms where teachers discuss. After, after that thing, the, many of the teachers, participating teachers, continued to have Facebook and other forms of communication. But that was restricted and it is now closed. But that was needed for the doc uh, handling of the documents, mm -hmm. because otherwise only ministry or we would have been the ones who read all of them. Thank there you. was another thing included in that. We organized, uh, organized visits from one school to certain target schools. That was also made by, in platform. It's, it's like a re reserving a table in a restaurant. Certain number of tables were reserved for target schools and schools could simply reserve two hours of visiting time. And then the school prepared to present the, you preferred the word innovations. I don't like it, but let's call it, they presented their innovations <laughs> or ways of working.
But there are other platforms, but now I was talking about exactly related to the project. And you should have that if you get that big thing. Mm. Um, I have, uh, okay, let me ask a quick question. The, uh, the pyramid, the three-tier intervention that you described, it, it looks remarkably similar to what the Americans call the RTI, response yes. to intervention approach. I was wondering, and I think it showed up there about the same time in 2004. I was wondering who was the direction of influence here. Yeah. We know that in one sense we, we make a possible for errors by using that. The Finnish model was developed in a working group and there was no evidence. We, we knew everybody of them, I was not then there, only an expert. That was not used in that white paper. And we used, we simply introduced my team when we were facing the problem how to describe our three-tier system. So we used the same model and realized that there are many, many resemblances, but it was not a copy of that. Of, uh, in the Finnish, okay. Let's the first one. Mm -hmm. We have sixty thousand students in comprehensive school, and you have then sixty. You have one hundred thousand students. No, one million. One million students teachers. About. Yeah, Do you really? Are, con are, are you really thinking that you say that these one million teachers are all against totally all innovations? All millions. I put it that way to, to say that that's not true. But the spirit... I no, I don't even believe that. Yes, they complain all kind of things all the time. But still they do all kind of things. They come through the job. Kind of <laughs> yes, I think it's, it's part, of the, part of the system. And teacher trades in most countries are very powerful lobbyists as well. Yeah. You have to take to t work with the teacher trade unions as well. I know that I'm making fun of this situation, but you have to break down the resistance and then you find that it's not universal and strongly against. There are all kinds of schools, all kinds of principles and, and you can penetrate that. Because in one sense, everybody, I mean, children learn better if teachers are happy. So I prefer to work so that teachers will not get unhappy. <laughs> and they don't like to be pushed or ordered. They say, yes, yes, and do as they like. And therefore, we need this two-way of communication. Otherwise, it does not succeed. The second point, that school is not alone. Yes, I agree. How to... 
Some of you remember my four schools. One was open school, which deals how the borders are constituted in the minds of teachers. Are they penetrable or not penetrable? Children in certain areas where problems exist, school must cooperate with police and social welfare. Otherwise, children are not appearing in the school. We, to take a simple example from a school from Helsinki, which Andre knows as well, so school of Soininen is like school of Dewey or Makarenko. Children are very tired on Mondays because they have been uh, young children, I mean primary school age, from 7 to 12. And they, were, they started to be very restless on, already on Thursday because the drug dealers were appearing then on Thursday afternoon and Friday morning. So in order to attack that, police was contacted and also parents were contacted to prevent that activity. So otherwise you would have lost Monday because they were tired, Friday because they were already using drugs or drinking or expecting to have the exciting Friday and Saturday evening. So almost half of Thursday was lost. So you would have only Tuesday, Wednesday and half of Thursday active time. So collaboration with parents, social work, police was needed. But that's a complex thing. It's, it's, I don't know any universal solutions because you need local connections, local people who feel responsibility for their own children and other children. Generally, you cannot order somewhere from Helsinki or Moscow that police should take care of, of early real traffic offenders. So nobody really knows a full system. But yes, there are different kind of negotiation agreements which are being used, not only the student welfare group, which is the organizing body, I, I didn't mention that, but also the director and then the board, which is made of parents and others, they are all needed. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, thank you, sir. My name is Arun, I'm from India. I have one doubt, it's different doubt. I don't know Russian language, so I'm trying to speak here in English with the people. But they're, they're not understanding simple English, but they're well-educated, well-positioned people. Only few people understanding also simple, simple English. So it's education discussion, so I'm asking. In school and university, how the, they give, give important for learning and studying English. Russia is a big country. For us, it's a very developed country. So it's for me, it's surprised. It's okay. There are Finno-Ugric group of languages is made of Finnish, Hungary, Hantimanti, and some other small groups in Russia. It's impossible to learn everybody. Who remains that. here. So Finland cannot survive without a heavy language program. Finnish, Finland is a bilingual country. Every administrator and public officers must be able to speak also Swedish. So they learn. Many people don't like Swedish, but anyway, that's the fact. Then we have an extensive language program, but mainly English is now the language which everybody, almost everybody, learns from the third up to, from the third grade or latest from the fifth grade. So Finnish all the time, Swedish depending on the so-called major language, which most often is English, which then start on third grade. And then in some other schools, in, like in my old Lyceum, 
they have 14 languages from Finnish to China, Chinese and Japanese, but none of Indian languages, but anyway. So at least three languages and Swedish is not often mastered very well. English is the one which you can use in many occasions and situations. Thank you. We're about 20 minutes over time, so, and I have another engagement, but I, you know, maybe somebody will have um, questions after the talk, and I want to ask you to join me in thanking our guests for yes. a wonderful lecture. Thank you.